For today's In Focus, we return to the Udstal Alps, on the border of Austria and Italy, for it was here on the 19th of September, 1991, 25 years ago, that a group of hikers made a remarkable discovery. In the meltwaters of the Similon Glacier, at a height of 3,200 metres, they came across human remains. Believing him to be recently deceased, the mountaineers reported the body, and the next day police attempted to remove the corpse using ice axes and a pneumatic drill. This attempt was abandoned due to bad weather. On the 22nd of September, a team from Innsbruck recovered the body for medical examination. It was becoming clear that this was not a recent death, and by the 24th of September, the archaeologist Conrad Spindler had been asked to examine the corpse. He suggested that this man was around 4,000 years old. This was based on the remarkable artefacts recovered with the body. He was approximately 1.65 metres, or 5 feet 5 inches, tall, and had the appearance of a late Neolithic man, very much from that part of the world. Due to where he was discovered, he quickly gained the nickname Utsi, the Iceman. Utsi's teeth were worn flat from a diet of coarse grain, and his hair had recently been cut before death. There was evidence of smoke in his lungs, probably from a lifetime spent around campfires, and indeed soot had been used in a series of linear tattoos found across his body. Some have suggested that these might have acted as guidelines for a form of acupuncture. Examination of his hands and nails revealed that this man was accustomed to manual labour, but also that an illness had slightly affected his nail growth shortly before death. Analysis of Utsi's intestinal content showed he'd recently had two meals, one only eight hours before his death. One consisted of chamois meat, and the other was of red deer. Both had been consumed with roots and fruit accompaniment, and also einkorn wheat processed, probably in the form of bread. Analysis of pollen found in these meals showed that one had been consumed in a mid-altitude conifer forest. Other pollen indicated he had been close by to domesticated crops such as wheat or even legumes. These suggest that in the hours before his death, Utsi had been at low altitude and had travelled to high altitude. It was also clear that Utsi was host to the intestinal parasite, whipworm. Despite this, Utsi's lifestyle meant that he weighed around 61 kilograms and had the healthy physique of an Olympian wrestler. As intriguing as this discovery was, archaeologists were equally excited by the paraphernalia he was discovered with. Chief amongst which was the copper axe, still hafted to its yew-wood handle. Typically, such axes are found without their handles as the wood rots away. This was a remarkable opportunity to examine exactly how the axe and the handle connected. Utsi had been found with a yew wood bow, smeared in fat to maintain its spring in harsh environments, and in a deer skin quiver were fourteen arrows of an extremely advanced and elegant design. Utsi was prepared for his environment. He had a kit for making flint stone tools and a kit for starting fires hung on a leather belt around his waist. This included a knife, flint with a yew wood handle, stored in a grass woven sheath. The knife had residue on it from gathering moss, which he probably used for starting fires, as toilet paper, and even for chewing. Small bits of moss were found in his stomach. The movement of snow and ice over the millennia had essentially dragged Utsi out of his clothes, but these too were well preserved. Utsi's clothes were complex and sophisticated. He wore a cloak made of woven grass. His coat, belt, leggings, loincloth and shoes all used different types of leather, along with a nice warm bare skin cap. His shoes were waterproof and apparently designed for walking on snow, their wide padding providing a nice spread for his weight. 
They were constructed of bear skin on the bottom, deer hide on the top, and also a tree bark netting around the back, with grass inserted for comfort. Utsi's coat was made from several different animals. His loincloth was made from the skin of a sheep, not dissimilar to a modern domesticated animal. His leggings were made from domesticated goat's leather, and his shoelaces had come from a European cow. Utsi's clothes give us an excellent sense of the late Neolithic, early Bronze Age, or Copper Age, dress in this part of the world. Despite his preparedness, archaeologists came to the conclusion that Utsi had frozen to death. He had died of overexposure in the heights of the mountain, and for a while it was case closed. However, in 2001, ten years after his discovery, Utsi was examined once more. A combination of CT scans and X-rays revealed that something had been missed in the initial analysis. A stone arrowhead was found lodged in his back, along with a corresponding hole in his skin. A significant new element to Utsi's story was revealed. The question now was why was he shot in the back? What were the circumstances of his death? Had this travelling nomad been shot by an enemy? Had he been shot in secret? Was he mugged? Was he a victim of a war? Had he even been on the run? Was he a criminal? In 2003, DNA analysis revealed blood from four separate human individuals on his clothing and his arrowheads. It is possible that Utsi killed two people with the same arrow, both times retrieving his arrow, and then carried a wounded comrade on his back. Utsi's body was covered in bruises and cuts. He'd even been hit in the head, and at some point he was shot in the back. And at some point in his final moments, certainly before rigor set in, he lay on his stomach attempting to reach at the arrow stuck in his back. Today, a monument stands where Utsi was found, and some archaeologists have suggested that actually he was deliberately buried where he lay. Perhaps he didn't die on the mountain after all. But however he got there, Utsi's final hours were certainly dramatic and violent. Utsi the Iceman is one of the world's most famous archaeological discoveries, and Europe's oldest known natural human mummy. In 2011, 20 years after his discovery, the South Tyrol Museum, where Utsi is housed, commissioned a reconstruction of the man himself. This pose was deliberately naturalistic, showing him tired at the end of the day and a little unkempt. That said, though, after what we've learned about him, who can blame him? Utsi continues to be the subject of interest and study. Research in 2012, for example, showed he had cardiovascular disease, something hitherto thought to be fairly modern. Intact blood cells have been discovered, showing he was blood type O. Analysis of Utsi's hair has shown high levels of copper and arsenic. Given that his axe was 99% copper, he was possibly involved in smelting the metal. In 2007, Isotopic analysis of his teeth showed that Utsi probably spent his childhood in northern Italy. And indeed, his entire genome has been sequenced, revealing that he had brown eyes, was lactose intolerant, and that some Sardinians and Corsicans share a common ancestor with him. In other words, their populations haven't moved quite as much as the rest of the continent. And analysis of his skeleton has shown that Utsi walked a lot. His hip bone was extremely worn down. For many, Utsi is an icon of archaeology, and a symbol of both the mysteries which we try to tackle and the answers that we can glean from archaeological evidence. Utsi's iconic status means he turns up in some unexpected places. For example, Brad Pitt has a tattoo of him on his forearm. For archaeologists, Utsi is not only a remarkable find, but also a critical reminder never to be too proud to revisit the conclusions that we make, especially in the light of new evidence and better techniques. It is in a similar spirit that I have revisited Utsi with this video. What better a way to mark his 25th anniversary than by revisiting my own work, 
making changes and improvements where necessary, and of course, adding in the latest research from the past few years. So, from everyone here at Arkea Soup Towers, here's to another 25 years of learning from Utsi the Iceman. <laughs>